Thank you, Lord. Run into their seats. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know y'all been praying for Pastor Jack and Michelle and the kids and Robin and Steve and all their family. They've been in Galveston all week in the rain. So I think they're, uh, I think they're coming back this afternoon. But uh, we've missed them. But we know that they got away for a good time of uh, rest and relaxation. Amen. You that are visiting with us for the very first time, there's a card in the seat. If you would uh, like to fill that out, it's uh, uh, if we uh, can call you, if we can pray with you. But it's just a good record for us to, uh, to know that you were here and we're so blessed that you've come today. Amen. To the service. Uh, I want to do a pre- teaching before I do my sermon. <laughs> and I did, Lord just spoke this to me. The Bible tells us that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I, I had a hard time with that because there's no way I was righteous. Amen? So I, I really had to go before the Lord and find out, Lord, your word says that because of Jesus Christ, and his righteousness, therefore I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so praying about that and, and, and wanting to, I want to truly be able to say I am the righteousness of God. Because Jesus died who is righteous, who took every unrighteous thing on his body so that I wouldn't have to have it. And so when we ask for forgiveness, when we sin, anybody sin this week? Yeah. <laughs> well, I did too. But here, here, here's, here's where the goodness of God comes in. God knew that. He knew when we were created. But the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those that come to God must believe that He is God, and that He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek His face. So by faith, now get a hold of this, by faith, I recognize sin in my life. I recognize when I sin. I recognize sin in my life because I have a relationship with God Almighty. Yes. I'm not just fellowshipping with God. I've passed that stage. Mm -hmm. There's a time when people, they just fellowship with Christ. No, we have a relationship. We can relate to Jesus, His life, His death, His burial, and His resurrection. We can relate to that. Yes. Amen? Amen. So therefore, we have a relation. And once we know that we are in relationship with Christ, when I mess up, when I do a boo-boo, and I know that I do it. See, that's one thing about being a Christian. A Christian knows when they sin. A sinner doesn't know when they sin. That's just something, that's just their lifestyle. But because we are born again, the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead abides in you and me. I know when I have sinned, and I'm sorry for it. And I say, Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. As soon as I do that, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody ought to be happy about that. All I have got to do is say, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. What I did was stupid. What I said was stupid. But forgive me, Lord. And once we say, Father, Father forgive me and repent, which means 180 degrees. Once we say that, then we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus, we're here today because he gave his son to live a life, to die on a cross, and to be raised from the dead on the third day 
He did it all for you and I. And so we can say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because I now recognize my sin and I ask God to forgive me of it. Amen? Amen. Is that powerful or not? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 2 Timothy 3. How many know we're living in perilous times? How many know the world's going goofy? The girl's crazy. We're on the verge of World War III. Uh, uh, It's just just crazy the times that we're living in. And and the Apostle Paul, over 2,000 years ago, just let us know in the end times, how many would say we're close to the end? And when it says in the end times, that means end. That means there's no moss, no, no moss, no more. In the end times, perilous times, and perilous means whatever you can think that's bad, hazardous, uh, worsening the worst. Perilous times will happen. Now, what's interesting is it's not about famine. It's not about earthquakes. It's not about disaster. It's about man. Perilous times are going to come because man has turned away from God and has become God. Man will be lover of himself. Unnatural affections, turning the godly things into ungodly things. Boastful, proud, covetous, selfish in everything that he says and does. And, we're, and, and man, that's man. But the Apostle Paul, in, in 2 Timothy, he, he, he lets them know what's going to happen in these end times. And the church is going to be persecuted. How many know as a Christian you're going to be persecuted? Yes. Because you're standing up for right. Yes. You're standing up for Christ. I just, I hate to see what happened at the Olympics. I, I, I just, this is just a picture of how the world is changing. And, and they're doing this. If you didn't see it, the Last Supper is a mockery, is a mockery. And uh, the ones that put it on said, oh, well, we didn't really mean that. Well, that's, the, that's what the devil does. He hits you and then say, well, I didn't mean to. But people, people are accepting that. But uh, the Apostle Paul says, I'm persecuted, you're going to be persecuted. I'm going to go through hell. But then he says, but even though I went through hell, my God was with me. I'm so glad God's with me. Jesus said, I'm in this world, but I'm not of it. We're not of this world. Christ has separated us out. We've been sanctified, baptized, and set apart. And I love this part. You've been justified. Justified means just as if it never occurred. In 2 Corinthians, it's talking about the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It lists all the unrighteous deeds. And, 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 and Paul's preaching and he looks out in the congregation and he said, and such were some of you. Jenny, you were there? You were there, Jenny? Victoria, you were there. You were there, Mike. But no more. And such were some of you. But you've been sanctified, set apart. You've been washed, and you've been justified. Only a loving God can justify us and to tell me it never happened my flesh wants to recoil (laughs) and say well Lord you know what I did because of Christ and everything that he's done for us baptize me sanctified me, set me apart from the world, 
and then said, I'm justified just as if it never happened. Catherine Kuhlman, one of the great saints of the world, great healing ministry, would have meetings with 4,000 people there. She was, a, she was a, a, a mighty woman of God. And they interviewed her one time, and the, and the, uh, the, the guy asked her, he said, well, then what about your first marriage and your divorce? And she said, I was never married and divorced. He said, well, yeah, it's on the record. You were married, and, uh, but you got divorced. She said, no. And her thinking was, it's just as if it never happened. That's what God does with our sins. So he's saying in the last days, perilous times are going to happen, and he starts talking about everything that, that uh, mankind is going to do. And then he says... I don't want to get this right. But continue. Everybody say continue. continue. But continue in that which you have learned and that which you are assured of. Not just what we've learned, but he's saying, but continue. Now he's telling us hard times are going to come. Perilous times are going to come. But continue. Here, here's our safety net. But continue in that which you've learned and that which you are assured of. So it's one thing to know the scriptures, but what are we assured of? I'm assured that my God shall supply. I'm assured that by his stripes I am healed. I'm assured that no weapon formed against me can prosper, no evil can come my dwelling pen. I'm assured that he'll watch over me to keep me from stumbling. Amen? We've got to, be assured, we've got, we've got to talk that. Now, we don't just talk that when times are good. We've got, we got to talk that when times don't look good. We've got to talk it that my God shall provide when it don't look like no way Jose. Amen? But then I know that my God makes a way where there seemeth to be no way. Amen? Are you assured of that? Are you assured that you'll live and not die to declare the glory of God? Hallelujah. See, he said, he said, and then he says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Now, we're still in 2 Timothy 3. Perilous times are going to happen. Persecution is going to come. Continue in that which you've learned and, and you know all about. And then he says, all Scripture. Everybody say all. All. Is by God breathed. I was studying this morning, Psalms 22. If you, if you haven't read Psalms 22 lately, it's... it's David, 4,000 years before Jesus Christ, talking about Jesus in Psalms 22 and what he was going to do that last day's hanging on the cross. Hallelujah. This Bible that we put all our trust in, written over a period of 1,500 years, three continents, three languages, 40-something writers, and God put it exactly where he wanted it. You know that God, <laughs> God numbered the stars? That's pretty, that takes a God to do that. Then after he got through numbering them, he named them. Every star has a name. And I always say, if God did that, then he knows old Jackie Pigeon. And he used to know the number of hairs on my head. He doesn't have to, he, he doesn't have to worry about it, mine, mine, are, mine are few and far between. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So where do we, so after, after Paul tells us in these last days, perilous times, it's going to happen, and we're seeing it happen. I tell you what I, I dislike. I started to say hate, but I don't want to use it. This is what I don't like. I don't like our political system now. I don't like the 
the, the division in, in, in our nation. I, I, I hate that. I hate, I hate one side calling the other side names. Come, come on, we're civil people. The, our, two, our, our government is the greatest in the world. Amen. And, and our two-party system or three-party, whatever you have, uh, we should be working together, not tearing each other down. It's not about party. It's about people. I'd love to hear someone say, it's about the people. One nation under God. It's for the people. It's not about a party. Well, I got to say this for my party. No, it's not about party. It's about people. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, thank you, Lord. Romans 12. Romans 12. So here we are. What does Paul tell us? In Romans 12... I mark my Bible. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Jesus said, we are in this, but we're not of it. He said, if we were of it, I'd call an army. But that's not the way our kingdom operates. Our kingdom is a kingdom of faith. Our kingdom is a kingdom of faith. Be not conformed to this world, but be renewed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good in the sight of God. Thank you, Lord. Paul is the one that said, I used to know God in the flesh, but I now, know, uh, now know, know him by the flesh. I know him by the Spirit. What a conversion that Paul had. Totally anti-Christ, anti-way. Wanted to get rid of Christians because they went against the, the, the Pentateuch, the, the, the law of Moses. Wanted to go to Damascus and with letters to find you and put you in jail. And he even witnessed the killing of Christians. So he was as anti as he could be. It just took one encounter with Jesus Christ. And the first thing out of his mouth was, Lord, what would you have me to do? In a split second... Someone like Paul, his life was changed. And he went from hate to love. And then wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Such, I I want to talk to he and David of the Old Testament and Paul in the New Testament. I'd like to get them two together. God said, I'll make a way where there seemeth to be no way. Even though in these last days, when, when, time, when, when men's hearts are, are, are changed, when men, they're blaspheming the, the things of God, when they say good is bad and bad is, is good. And what, what it's doing is, it's wanting to get us to come off, our, come off of our foundation that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And that her, his word, it changes not. You don't change God's word. What God said, he means it. He'll stand behind it. The Bible says that he hastens his word to perform it. That means he's quick, he's immediate to confirm that word when we speak it. The Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. We as Christians, that's our greatest bomb. Our greatest weapon is our mouth because we can speak life. We speak blessings. The Bible says that I call heaven 
to make a notice of this. Write it down, heaven. I've set before them life and death, blessing and cursings. Choose life. Amen. We're in a great place, ladies and gentlemen. As Christians, as born again, recognizing the, the blood of Jesus Christ, acting on his word, believing in his word, that by his stripes I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. It tells me that I'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yes. Golly. We're walking dynamos. I am what he says I am, not what I say I am. Yes. I can do what he says I can do. Amen. I can have what he says I can have according to his word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad I'm drawn and not drug. You know, the Bible says God added to the church daily such that should be saved. So we're here today not of our own. We did not choose this. It, the Bible says God chose me. Hallelujah. David says, even in my mother's womb, I was called of God. Thank you, Lord. Stay strong. The Apostle Paul knew he was going to Jerusalem. He knew what his end was. He knew he, he had to get to Rome. He and the disciples were in a boat, and the, the boat was going to uh, sink and die, but the Lord spoke to him and says, No, you'll live because you have got to go to Rome. And Paul knew that. And it says, along the way, as he stopped, he encouraged the people. Even when discouragement was probably all over him, he said, I want to, I want to encourage you that God loves you, that God's for you, that God's working on your behalf. I prayed, someone this morning was talking to me and they're saying, God's working. Can everybody say that this morning? On your behalf, on your behalf right now, where you are, God is working. And all I have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that. I praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad I came to church. Stand to your feet with me. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Jack's going to get on to me because I didn't go past 12 o'clock. He's going to come back and say something next week about, uh, uh, he, give me 10 more minutes. I, li I like what he does. He'll say, I'm almost, who will give me five minutes? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 45, 45 minutes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whatever your need is this morning, God is well aware of it. And the Bible says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, Mary Jean talked about that. What sort of things you desire when you pray? I want to I wanna just help you a second. What sort of things you desire when you pray? The first desire of your prayer is that God's glorified in your prayer, in your situation. That's, boy, when, when we do that, because usually it's a selfish prayer. When, when we've prayed for something, it's really been, uh, my desire is that I get out of this mess. <laughs> Lord, I, that, that, you know, it's all about me. But, but but let's find out what God's desire is. Jesus said all he ever did that he heard his father say or do was that God be glorified. So in your situation, instead of just your desire, selfish, Lord, I want you to be desired. I want you to be glorified in this situation. Lord, I want to be able to testify yes. to the world. Look what my God did. Amen. And so Jesus said, the only thing I, I, I see my father say and I see my father do, I want to give him all the glory for it. So whatever your situation, whatever you're believing God for, whatever, whatever it is in the midst of all of this, Lord, I want you to be glorified. Now, when God's glorified, you become benefited. 
and God's working on you. He can't fail. He can't fail. Thank you, Lord. My God can't fail. My God can't come short. Thank you, Lord. 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 Gideon, a nobody, a nobody. Israel had turned their hearts against God. They, they started worshiping idols and golden calves and the nation and God turned them over to the Midianites turned them over to their enemies and the young man Gideon from the smallest tribe of Manassas they're out trying to bake some food grow some crops and the Midianites would come in and burn everything down and, and steal everything they had turned their backs on God but this is what the scripture says katemashatai and they cried out to God. And God heard them. And God sent a man, sent a prophet to, to Gideon. And said, oh, thou mighty man of valor. I think there's a lot of people that God would call mighty people of valor. He said, you're going to lead Israel he said, how can I do that? I'm the youngest in my tribe. I'm the smallest tribe. And, he's, and God said, I shall be with you. Gideon puts out a fleece. And the Lord comes through. And then, so he gets 30,000 men to go fight. 30,000 men to go fight. Woo, 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 30,000 men. And the Lord said, that's 20 too many. Well, 10,000 is not bad. Okay, Lord, 10,000. So take them down by the brook and see how they lap water. Do they stand up or do they lap like a dog? 300 men are left. All because of a young man that heard God. And God... Gideon ruled for 40 years in Israel. 40 years. I believe there are a lot of Gideons in this room today. Amen. I believe there are a lot of Gideons in this room today that God is, is saying, yeah, it looks bad. It looks like you're losing. But I'm going to use you to turn it around. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That gummit. <laughs> you got anything, baby? I just. I'm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just wait on the Lord for a second. Come on now. Thank you, Lord. 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 Lift up your, your heart to God right now, what, where you are. He already knows it. He, he knows where you are. He knows what you're dealing with. But just, just, just you and he right now. Thank you, Lord. 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 The, the, the greatest hindrance to God working in your, on your behalf, the greatest hindrance for your victory is your forgiveness of someone Your forgiveness, unforgiveness. 
Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. You say, Pastor, well, I, you, boy, you just don't know. I don't, I don't know if I can ever forgive them. Well, probably not, but if you ask God to help you, you can. Amen. Freedom comes, the light comes on when you, in your heart, the combination of your mouth and your heart, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, if two things would agree is in touching, your mouth and your heart agree is in touching, yes. and say, Lord, I for." Give. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I'm telling you, there's freedom. There's deliverance. Thank you. Come here. Say, do it. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. You just push it up. It's easier said than done. There you go. I'll just talk. Okay. You were talking about forgiveness, and <clears throat> there was a time when uh, I had uh, hatred growing in my heart, kind of like a mold, you know, mildew starts growing. And <clears throat> I was fighting against it because I was a good Christian person and I don't do things like that. So I'm just, I felt like I was sliding down a mud, a mud hole, a mud's hill. And I'm doing my feet like this, trying to stop from sliding, but I kept sliding. Mm -hmm. And I finally just said to the Lord, I, I am so sorry, Jesus. I know I, I am beginning to hate that person. I feel like I hate that person. And I am so sorry because I know that's not, that that's not pleasing to you. But I don't know what to do about it. And I just ask you to forgive me. <clears throat> instantly my heart was saturated Amen. Amen. that was a download of God's grace Amen. and the Amplify Bible says that uh, grace will turn your heart towards righteousness it strengthens your heart and turns it towards righteousness so call on God's grace but admit, admit where you are admit that you need help and then ask him and I mean instantly that that Hatred was gone. Amen. All of that was gone instantly. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There's power in it. <clears throat> God loves to, for, he forgave us of our sins. And if he forgives me for my sins, I can surely forgive. Because see, if we don't ask for forgiveness, he won't forgive us. Right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Pastor wanted me to announce, if you've been visiting with the church for a while, we're going to do next steps the first, second, the first Sunday in September? The 8th of September, we'll be doing a first steps class, which is for joining the church, becoming uh, uh, an active member in the church. Uh, and it, we'll be sharing more about that, but we're gonna do that. If you've been visiting with us and you would like to say, this is, this is your home, this is, this is where God's called you to, then we just uh, look out for that and we'll, we'll be giving you more information. Amen? Amen. Father, we praise you. We thank you for today. Thank you for loving us beyond measure. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you for helping us, Lord. We look to you, Lord. We don't look to our horses. We don't look to our armies. We look to our God. And so for that, Lord, we praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shake hands with everybody, hug your neck, greet those visiting with us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.